How young? How old are you? Eighty-one. Let's go.
I'm particularly speaking to the body of Christ and God is using me now as a voice crying in the wilderness a prophetic end time voice yes we are seeing a restoration of a lot of things and God wants us to speak loud and clear call the people of God into repentance because the church of Christ right now is so contaminated I'm not saying everybody's doing it God forbid that's not what I'm saying but the trend at which we are going now, if we don't have somebody to put the foot on the pedal or brakes pedal, we are really uh, driving ourselves into eternal destruction uh, 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 without any remedy. But thank God that Jesus Christ, by His Spirit, is allowing instruments that He has chosen to stand up and stand on the Word of God without compromise. And I don't want to compromise. I'll tell you the truth the way it is. It is left to you and to me. And anyone listening, whether we submit to God and see His blessings, or we resist God and rebel against Him and incur some you know, punishment or chastisement and even destruction, is left to us. Amen. So, we are going to continue now uh, from where I stopped in the last broadcast. Um, I've been going back and forth, really, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 3, uh, verses 31 and 32. Then Gospel chapter nine. Uh, sorry, the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew. Let me repeat that. Matthew chapter five, verses thirty-one and thirty-two. Then Matthew chapter nineteen, verses one. Uh, almost, you know, throughout the entire chapter, you will see uh, the topic we've been dealing with, and then the Gospel of Mark chapter ten, verses one to twelve. And I will go to First Corinthians chapter seven, as well as the Book of Romans chapter seven. We are going to see a lot of things really in the Word of God, and I'll be sharing. Even again, I'm giving you some of these references very quick. In case I forget them, you can go take your Bible. Don't just believe what I'm telling you. You can read it from the scripture for yourself. If I'm adding anything or subtracting anything from the word of God, don't listen to me. But if I'm telling you, you know, the truth the way it is, out of love and compassion with wisdom, then stick with the word of God and defy every advice and counseling anybody and any expert that will come out and try to tell you to disobey God, don't listen to them. That person will endanger your life. I don't care whether it's a preacher or it is a politician telling you to do whatever God tells you not to do. So we will be seeing here, we're talking about, um, uh, let's read it together before we delve uh, uh, into uh, uh, the explanation without even changing anything. Uh, from it, you know, the explanation of the Word of God, because the Word of God explains itself. Amen. So, uh, let's see it again in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. And Jesus here um, was teaching about family and marriage, and particularly marriage, God's way, God's uh, original plan about marriage and family. He says here, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife let him give her a writing of divorce or divorcement. That's uh, the King James Version. Then verse 32 says, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save or accept for the cause of fornication, causing her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. So here we see Jesus explaining uh, his immutable truth to mankind in comparison of course to the teaching of Moses and the, the law of Moses Moses was the one and we saw the reason why uh, he finally authorized or allowed men um, uh, the men of Israel when they were living in Egypt heading to the land of Canaan the promised land and uh, they, they were, there was a lot of tension, as you know. The, the people of Israel saw tremendous miracles from God, but from time to time they were tested here and there, traveling, you know, in wilderness, and it was really tough for them. But it's not justifiable either. So Moses finally, uh, uh, he should have consulted with God uh, when he has been a, a prophet of God, a leader, and a spokesperson for the people as well, a spokesperson for God. He should have consulted God on that matter, but Moses went ahead under pressure. He allowed the people, he said, look, if you 
have fed up with your wife, you know, give her the certificate of divorcement here. And so he was talking to men particularly. It was a men-dominant type of culture then. And so men were the ones initiating much of the divorces. And so Moses gave them the authorization, and Jesus clearly said, even though he knew Moses was wrong, he didn't put the blame totally on Moses, he put the blame where it belonged. He said, it is you, the men, because of the hardness. Your heart was so hard, like iron, like metal. That's why Moses finally capitulated to allow you to do that. Then Jesus said, but in the beginning it wasn't that way. So, when Moses wasn't even there, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost determined what had to be done. So Jesus was telling them, let's go back to the beginning. And do you know what? Even when we come to the culmination of this civilization and man style of rule, Jesus is going to take us back to original position that he had with his Father and the Holy Spirit. We're going to go back to origin. He's going to re restate what he intended for Adam and Eve before they fell into sin. So Jesus was telling them, yeah, you might have thought that the law of Moses allowed you to go ahead and divorce, but I, grace, the law of grace now is telling you, you cannot do it this way. So, we're seeing grace and the law of Moses going hand in hand. Moses simplified the situation of divorce, and, you know, in a family and remarriage. I mean, divorce particularly. But Jesus now clarified the whole thing. He said, Moses might be the messenger that we use, but I am the Lord of the house. I am the boss. I have the final say over Moses. I have the final say over any archangel or any angel. I have the final say over Abraham, over Noah, over Abel, Cain, Adam, any human being. Paul, Peter, Solomon, Samson, and David, and any one of the giants of faith that we know of, Jesus has the final say so. Because he is God, he's not man. So here we see Jesus explaining now one condition that will warrant, will allow divorce. And he said, let me read it again in two passages. Before we understand his mindset, where he was coming from. In fact, if you understand the condition he has said here, literally he's telling you I'm putting a padlock on even divorce. You will see that it's, it's almost like he's taking you back to saying that I'm not going to allow you to divorce anyway. And particularly to remarry. We read in the book of Malachi, God says he hates it. He hates divorce. So here, let's see what Jesus said. In that part, uh, chapter 5 and verse 32. But I, Jesus, I, Grace, say to you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving or except for the cause of fornication. Fornication is a key thing here. Jesus mentioned the word fornication. A lot of different versions, Bible versions we are having today are putting different kinds of interpretation. They are putting a spin. On that word, some are saying adultery, and that's not what Jesus said. Because you can see here, he said, except for fornication, if not, you cause her to commit adultery. Jesus knew the difference between fornication and adultery. If you don't understand, you go and take any Bible, you know, dictionary, and see it. And I've explained it in the previous broadcast here. One, fornication particularly is, is, uh, is an act of sexual intercourse that is between people that are not married, single, or celibates. Okay, that's fornication. But adultery here is once somebody is in the covenant relationship with another person or in, in, in the spousal, or they, uh, they're married, and one or two of them decide to leave their holy matrimony and go and faithfully after another person outside that matrimony, that covenant of marriage, it's known as adultery. This is not fornication anymore. It's adultery. Then Jesus also mentioned that if a man looks at a woman lustfully in his heart, saying, if, you know, if I had a chance, I would have loved to sleep with this woman. Already in your heart or my heart, if we think that way, we have already committed adultery. That's how he defines it. Then we know totally the adultery too is about the nation of Israel or the church of Jesus Christ. We are in covenant, marital covenant relationship with God. Israel 
was and is till today. It is an everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That Israel was his wife, his spouse. And the present day church too is a bride or a bride to be of Christ Jesus. If we walk away into that holy matrimony, that covenant relationship, and we go after devils, or after foreign gods, that is adultery. No matter how tough and bitter life's challenges may seem to you, the positive power of negative effect may be the book that can help you turn your obstacles into opportunities. Call 1-229-638-1065 right now or visit MyMiracleTV.org to get your personal copy of The Positive Power of Negative Effects written by Dr. Indy Audi, the international bestseller, which may help you turn every obstacle you confront into the opportunity of your success in life. For over 30 years in nearly 40 nations around the world, God has been using Dr. Andy Aldo mightily, according to John 14, 12, to raise many physically dead and dying people, heal the sick, operate many special miracles, as well as winning many sinners to Christ. As the author of the internationally best-selling series known as Raising the Dead, Dr. Aldo has been honorably received by many world leaders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, log on to RaisingTheDead.org for additional details because Dr. Adu is coming to your area for a great meeting and you need to be there.